I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. Therefore, I shall not fall. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to evening prayer. If you'd like to follow along in your books, we're on page 41. And if you'd like to follow along online, you can go to dailyoffice2019.com. Let's come before the prayer. Sorry, come before our Lord in prayer. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no help in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent. According to your promises, declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And now we worship in the words of the Faux Soleron, which can be found on page 44. O gladsome and light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Now we turn to the Psalms, which have been appointed for this evening. They begin on page 397, the Psalm 98. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his own right hand and with his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord declares his salvation, his righteousness, has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and truth towards the house of Israel, and all the ends of the world have seen the salvation of our God. Show yourself joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Sing, rejoice, and give thanks. Praise the Lord with the harp. Sing with the harp a song of thanksgiving, with trumpets also and horns. Go show yourselves joyful before the Lord the King. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the round world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he has come to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Now Psalm 99. The Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He sits between the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. They shall give thanks unto his name, which is great and wonderful. Holy is he and mighty, a king who loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed judgment and righteousness in Jacob. O magnify the Lord our God, and fall down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he heard them. He spoke to them out of the cloudy pillar, for they kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. You heard them, O Lord our God. You forgave them, O God, yet punished their evil doings. O magnify the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. And now Psalm 100. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, 
and his truth endures from generation to generation. And now, Psalm 101. My song shall be of mercy and judgment. Unto you, Lord, will I sing. Oh, let me have understanding in the way of godliness. When will you come to me? I will walk in my house with integrity of heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the sins of unfaithfulness. No such thing shall cleave to me. A crooked heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him will I destroy. Whoever has a proud look and an arrogant heart, I will not suffer him. My eyes shall look with favor upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. Whoever leads a godly life, he shall be my servant. No deceitful person shall dwell in my house. One who tells lies shall not tarry in my sight. I shall soon destroy all the ungodly who are in the land, that I may root out all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we turn to the first lesson, which is taken from the book of Ezra, chapter 7, starting at the first verse. Now after this, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, the son of Sariah, son of Azariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Shalom, son of Zadok, son of Akatub, son of Amariah, son of Azariah, son of Mariah, son of Zerahiah, son of Uzi, son of Buki, son of Abishua, son of Phineas, Phineas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra went out from Babylonia. He was a scribe, skilled in the law of Moses that the Lord, the God of Israel, had given. And the king granted him all that he asked, for the hand of the Lord, his God, was on him. There went up also to Jerusalem in the seventieth year of Artaxerxes the king, some of the people of Israel, and some of the priests and Levites, the singers and gatekeepers, and the temple servants. And Ezra came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. For on the first day of the first month he began to go up from Babylonia, and on the first day of the fifth month he came to Jerusalem, for the good hand of his God was on him. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. This is a copy of the letter that King Artaxerxes gave to Ezra the priest, the scribe, a man learned in the matters of the commandments of the Lord and his statutes for Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven. Peace. And now I make a decree that any one of the people of Israel, or their priests or Levites in my kingdom, who freely offers to go to Jerusalem, may go with you. For you are sent by the king and his seven counselors to make inquiries about Judah and Jerusalem, according to the law of your God, which is in your hand. And also to carry the silver and gold that the king and his counselors have freely offered to the God of Israel, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem with all the silver and gold that you shall find in the whole province of Babylonia, and with the free will offerings of the people and the priests, vow willingly for the house of their God that is in Jerusalem. With this money, then you shall with all diligence buy bulls, rams, and lambs, with their grain offerings and their drink offerings, and you shall offer them on the altar of the house of your God that is in Jerusalem. Whatever seems good to you and your brothers to do with the rest of the silver and gold you may do, according to the will of your God, the vessels that have been given you for the service of the house of your God, you shall deliver before the God of Jerusalem. And whatever else is required for the house of your God, which it falls to you to provide, you may provide it out of the king's treasury. And I, Artaxerxes the king, make a decree to all the treasurers in the province beyond the river. Whatever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, requires of you, let it be done with all diligence, up to a hundred talents of silver, a hundred cores of wheat, a hundred baths of wine, a hundred baths of oil, and salt without prescribing how much. Whatever is decreed by the God of heaven, let it be done in full for the house of the God of heaven, lest his wrath be against the realm of the kings and his sons. We also notify you that it shall not be lawful to impose tribute, custom, or toll on any one of the priests, the Levites, the singers, the doorkeepers, the temple servants, or other servants of this house of God. And you, Ezra, according to the wisdom of your God that is in your hand, appoint magistrates and judges who may judge all the people in the province beyond the river, all such as know the laws of your God. And those who do not know them you shall teach. Whoever will not obey the law of your God and the law of the king, let judgment be strictly executed on him 
whether for death or for banishment or for confiscation of his goods or for imprisonment. Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, who put such a thing as this into the heart of the king to beautify the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem and who extended to me a steadfast love before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty officers. I took courage for the hand of the Lord my God was on me and I gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let's worship in the words of the Magnificat, which can be found on page 45. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him throughout all generations. He has shown the strength of his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones, and has exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our fathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we turn to our second lesson, which is taken... From Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 2, starting at the first verse. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men, who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we also we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourselves to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth, but avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenus and Pilatus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some, but God's firm foundation stands bearing the seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies, you know that they breed quarrels, and the Lord's servant must be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, after being captured by him to do his will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let's worship in the words of the New Timidus, which can be found on page 46. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. To be a light to light the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He 
ascended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. God, you declared your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the source of all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Light our darkness, we beseech you, O Lord, and by your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work, or watch, or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. And the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, and shield the joints. And all for your love's sake. Amen. And now, dear friends, let's pray the general thanksgiving together, starting on page 51. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray to give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.